Welcome back. My, this is the second hour. That first hour went fast, didn't it? And we have got something great tonight in this second hour. Uh, Tommy Mann is going to be talking about a, a wonderful ministry that he's involved in. And as I told you at the end of the first hour, if you have a friend that's had an abortion or miscarriage or lost a child in childbirth, why, call them right now and tell them to tune in to Channel 16 because there's something good that's coming up right away. Our scripture tonight is in Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, uh, yeah, chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, uh, if you have a need, call that number right now, 244-1616. Our, our prayer ministers are standing by waiting on you. They want to minister to you. But right now, Jennifer Henderson is singing Whatever It Takes. God bless you. Whatever it takes. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And we're going to hear from Jennifer just a little later with her testimony. But right now, I want to welcome Pastor Tommy Mann. Thank God you. bless you, Pastor. You too. Great to be here. So delighted to have you with us tonight. I'm glad to be here. Yes. Uh, I, believe, I believe you told me that you're pastoring up around Union? Yes, sir. I'm the associate pastor there in Union at in Philippi Union. Baptist. Yes. And what... and. Uh, Let's see, what, what church is that? Philippi. Philippi. Yes, sir. Philippi, Philippi Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. Hey, 
Hey, that's a good Bible name. It is. It's good. It's a great city. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, and I believe you wrote a book here. We've got a copy of it here, Asleep in Heaven's Nursery. And uh, you, you have a ministry uh, apart from what you're doing in the, in the local church there. Of course, yes, you're doing plenty there. But uh, that, that is something I know. What, I guess we might put it like this, your testimony. What, mm -hmm. what led you to write A Sleep in Heaven's Nursery? Well, I'd always wanted to be a writer. Uh, this, that was actually my second book. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I'd always wanted to write from the time I was young. I, of course, uh -huh. I didn't know what I wanted to write. And, and A Sleep in Heaven's Nursery is not the book I would have written. That's not something I thought about you know, as a young man, something I wanted to write uh, with the topics it, it addresses. Uh, I would have preferred more you know, Christian living or apologetics or different things like that. That's my first book uh, dealt more with just Christian living. But uh, Sleep in Heaven's Nursery came as a result of the struggles that my wife and I went through. Uh, in the book, we talk about our, our, the three miscarriages we had before the birth of our daughter. Uh, and uh, what's not in the book is what's happened since then, uh, even a fourth miscarriage, uh, but then the birth of a son. So it's been uh, a rocky road as far as uh, that goes with the pregnancies and, and the child loss. But through going through that ourselves, we began to realize that a lot more people than we realized go through it. It's far more yeah. common than, than I had ever thought. When you first get pregnant, you know, when you're newlyweds and, yes. and you're excited and it uh, never occurred to us that, that we might lose a child. It's just not something that we'd thought no. of. And, and when we went through it, we felt very alone and that, well, nobody knows what this is like. Uh, but then we began to realize a lot more people do. But it's something that people, I think, keep inside. It, it's something that for so long was a stigma to that. It's something you don't talk about. Um, mm -hmm. If you lose a, a parent or a spouse or one of your living children, people allow you to grieve. But if you lose a child in the womb, a lot of people think, you know, take a day or two off work and come back on Monday and you're just supposed to get over it. And it just doesn't work that way. And, and we yeah. wanted to let people know that it's okay to grieve. It's healthy to grieve. But absolutely, yeah, I wanted to answer a lot of those questions that we went through uh, mm -hmm. to, to maybe make that available for other people that are going through the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, my wife and myself had four children, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, people sometimes can ask the most stupid <laughs> questions. And uh, our oldest boy was 20 years old, studying for the ministry in Bible school, and he was killed. Oh. And this lady comes up to my wife and says, which is worse, to lose a child at age 20 or an infant? And she looked at her, and she says, Love is love. That's exactly right. Yeah. Love is love. Mm -hmm. And so whether, whether it is uh, a miscarriage, mm -hmm. what I mean, there's hopes. And, and uh, yeah, you're, yes. you're planning their future. You're thinking yes. about, you know, the, the life that your child's going to have. You're painting the nursery. And, yes. Um, and yeah, and it, it comes crashing down. And you already love that child. You pray for that child and looking forward to it. You've told your friends and family and they celebrate with you and then... In a minute, it's gone, and yeah, yeah it's, it's a difficult thing. Yes, yes. Well, uh, is there an age of accountability? We hear, <laughs> we hear that sometimes. Yes, I, I firmly believe in an age of accountability. Um, there was a time when I wasn't sure what I believed about that, and that's one of the things that the book addresses. Yeah. Um, I, at one point, I, I asked a... I a, read the book. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I asked a pastor friend of mine, I said, what do you believe about the age of accountability? He's, he's a Baptist like me, and he said, uh, he goes, well, I believe in the traditional Baptist viewpoint on that. And, <laughs> and I pressed him in a little farther, and that, that was really all I could get. Um, but I didn't know much more either. Uh -huh. You know, certainly not a Bible verse that explains the age of accountability, but yes. it's, uh, if, then you saw in the book, it's, it's more a matter of taking uh, portions of scripture and things people have said here and there and piecing it together, but also just understanding the nature of, of a loving God, of a merciful mm -hmm. judge. And, um, you know, it, we know about David who, who lost his son and he grieved. And yes. David said that he couldn't bring his son back to him, but he would go to be with him. Absolutely. Uh, and so I believe that David saw that, that, that infant son that he mm -hmm. lost. I believe David saw him you know, once, once his life on earth ended. Uh, and, and I believe the same for, for my children because of that age of accountability. Um, so that, that's something that, you know, people have different viewpoints on and that's okay. I don't claim to, to be the, 
guy with all the answers and, and you know what I say goes, but I certainly believe from looking at Scripture that, that Scripture teaches yes. that, that God does not hold, first of all, a child inside the womb that never lived to see the light of day. I certainly mm -hmm. don't believe that they would have even done anything to separate them from God, but, but an infant, um, people have said things like, well, the only way to heaven is through Jesus, and the infant didn't choose to go through Jesus. And that's yeah. what the age of accountability is all about. It says they didn't reach an age where they're accountable to go through the way of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the age of accountability is not necessarily the same with every child. Correct. It's not a, a certain age like seven. No. It's I, have, I, have seen, I have seen children as young as three and four and mm -hmm. five mm -hmm. who were able to make a, a real decision for Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and they did that and served God. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one little guy... Uh, the church I pastored out in Missouri several years ago, he was five years old, and this child came to Jesus and, and uh, turned his life over to him. And, yeah. I, I, you know, somebody said, oh, he's just a child. He's too young to know what's going on, you know. But I, uh, I, I, I went back to yeah. that church later on, and uh, I was, they was dedicating a, uh, a, new, a new church building. They called me back to preach the dedicatory sermon. And... Uh, uh, here, here, this little five-year-old was a was a teenager now, yeah. up in his upper teens, and he was he was still serving God yeah. and, and and working in the church actively. Yeah, that's good. And, and, and some of some of you know it's a little later. Yeah. Who, who knows? Well, one of the greatest things I ever got to do was baptize my five-year-old daughter. Ah, so, yes. Um, you know, she there was just no mistake in it. She understood. Jesus said, "You have to have the faith." of mm -hmm. a child anyway, and children, they understand that, you know, we give, well, we might not give them enough credit sometimes for what they comprehend, but she fully understood the nature of her sin and God hated her sin and it separates her. And so as a five-year-old, she made that choice to put her faith in Jesus. But there's others that, you know, for whatever reason, mentally, their capacity might not match their age and they could be, you know, 25 physically, but but their mental capacity might be there around a five-year-old. And so that's, that's age of true. accountability is not a physical age. It's, that's right. It's, yeah. And, and God understands each person. He's the creator of each one of us. And, and he thank knows. God he didn't make us a judge. That's exactly right. <laughs> a lot of people want to assume that role, and I certainly don't. Yes. Uh, when does life begin? At conception. At firmly, conception. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, the, the Supreme Court decision, Roe v. Wade, uh, you know, it's been years now, decades have yeah. passed. And in that, in the, the majority opinion that was written by the Chief Justice, he says in there that we have to consider the life of this unborn child. But four decades ago, he said, we don't know, um, the scientific community doesn't, doesn't know when life begins. The religious community was divided. The, even the Catholic Church, who now is extremely pro-life in the Southern Baptist Convention, they didn't know back then. And he said the legislative branch has never passed anything given rights to the unborn. But they wrote in the majority opinion on Roe versus Wade, they said if the religious community, the scientific community, and the legislative branch will come together and tell us it's alive inside the womb, then we have to protect this life. But until then, it's not the job of the justices to rule that way. But now here we are four decades later, and, and science has showed us life, the child is alive inside the womb. We, we have to believe that. Um, and the religious community now is united almost wholeheartedly in that. So we're just waiting for the legislative community to follow suit, and we're trying to, you know, to get legislation passed. But that's one of the, the things we try to do with our ministry, too. But um, So, yes, yeah, so to, to answer that question about life begin at conception, we know that the minute there's a fertilized egg, when, when the man and woman come together, that mm. zygote, it's called, is genetically complete. It has everything it will ever need for life. Right. It's not four months later or five months later, it's still gaining life. It's only growing in size. Everything is there. It has its own unique DNA. Uh, it's hair, the baby's hair and eye color, height, weight, all that stuff is determined. <laughs> uh, in that something, you, know, you take a dot of a pencil and yeah. that zygote is that size and it has everything it needs. And people tell us that, well, it's a blob of tissue or a dime a dozen. That's its own unique DNA. Its thumbprint is locked into that that nobody else will ever have. So Absolutely. They're special, and they're, they're made uh, by God who knits them together in the womb. It's, it's a living it's, person. It's not, it's not very long until there's actually a heartbeat. That's and, exactly right, and, and yeah. The, Just days after conception. Yes, yes. Before most people even know they're pregnant, the heart is beating. Yes, yes. Oh, my. Is it, is, this is a hard question. Is it ever okay to have an abortion? No. 
And it is a hard question, and that's something that's that I answer with sensitivity, and it's not something I rushed into writing, um, but, and and spent a lot of time uh, going through all the avenues because I know the objections to that. I know the health of the mother, and I know um, you know this child might be born with some kind of deformity or handicap, and I know. Um, a girl can say, well, I'm just not ready or I'm too young, and I know all the objections to that. But if we take what I said a minute ago, and I, I'm glad you asked in the order the questions you asked, because if we establish that the child is alive, mm -hmm. then how can you justify taking its life? And so even, um, even for some of the tragic things we might say, I'm sure you've met throughout your life people with handicaps or disabilities. Yeah. They're very much glad to be alive and glad to have the, the chance to live their life. And they, they make a lot of people around them uh, make their lives better. Uh, you know, they can be trying at times, but they're people. And, and we don't get to decide just because we might not think they'll have a good quality of life that we can make a decision to end it before it really gets started. Yes. Uh, and, and of course, there's, there's other issues. You know, in the woman's health, people think being pro-life means that you would, you know, watch a mother lay there and die. That's not what no. being pro-life is all about. It's always no, about it's saving any life that can be saved. Uh, right. but, but Dr. C. Everett Coop, he was the Surgeon General of the United States, pediatric surgeon for decades. He said he was never aware of a single instance in which an abortion was necessary to save the life of the mother. The number one health risk that pregnant women face is toxemia and preeclampsia. The, mm -hmm. the cure for that is delivery. And because of advances in neonatology and uh, NICUs, um, they can deliver much younger and the children can survive. I, I saw uh, yesterday a child delivered at 19 weeks. Uh, 24 is considered viable, but this is 19 weeks and surviving. So uh, the March of Dimes and other organizations are doing great things with yes. neonatology. So, uh, so we see them uh, being able to deliver younger. Um, women can go on bed rest. Now a lot of times they'll have an abortion because they don't want to go on bed rest. But that's, you know, part of being a mother sometimes is, is going through some difficult situations to give your child a chance at life. And, and some might say that's a cruel statement for me. But, but again, you're talking about ending, stopping a beating heart. When yeah. is it okay to do that? Um, sometimes life is hard and, and we have to right. go through hard times, but uh, my wife went through a kidney transplant to be able to have another child um, and to be able to, of course, improve her quality of life, but um, sometimes we have to go through things like that and that's, that's the hand we're dealt sometimes and if it's bed rest or um, both of our children were in NICU, our son for 23 days, our daughter for seven, and you know we, we sit there by their side and rock them in the rocking chairs and it's, mm -hmm. it's not ideal or the way we would have scripted it, but you know, I wouldn't have it any other way because they're both home now. They're both healthy. And like I said, I've baptized my daughter and watching her grow up. And, and that's just what life's all about. Oh, yes, uh, it is. It is. Uh, Pastor, how, how long have you been a Christian? I, I was um, started going to church when I was in second grade. I would second say, grade. yes, sir. But I would say that I truly understood and, and realized what it meant to be a believer in Jesus when I was in eighth grade. In fact, uh -huh. the, the day before my, my birthday. Uh, so my spiritual birthday and physical birthday line up. But um, like many people, I, I was in church, but um, didn't really know, didn't really take it seriously. So but you, it became personal to me. And your parents were church people, were they? That when I was in second grade, yes, sir. That's that's when we started. That's to, when you they, started with you was in the second grade. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And they, my parents had gone younger in their lives, and just for whatever reason, we weren't all going when I was a child. But um, got back into it yeah. at a good time. My. <laughs> what what about your wife? How's, what is her background? In She's from Texas. She really enjoyed the Coopers. She texted me uh, ah. being, being Texans. Um, she's she's from Dallas. Uh, I met her in college, and she did not realize, and, and talk a little bit about her in the book, never knew that she had a kidney disease. Uh, her mm -hmm. father had it, his father, but when she was born, their limited knowledge of that, they told her, don't worry, it only, it's only passed to males. You know, your daughter can't have it. Oh. So um, she was uh, 12 weeks pregnant with our daughter, Reagan, yeah. and we sat down um, with a the doctor. They referred us to a high-risk specialist in Spartanburg, and we sat down with that doctor, and first time we ever met him, he walked into his office. He said, now, let's talk about your kidney disease. And we just looked at each other. We thought he was, had walked in the wrong room or something. We didn't know she had a kidney disease. And, mm. um, and so then we found out she did. And, and even the doctor that we had seen before that had thought that an abortion would be the way to go uh, based on her kidneys beginning to fail. And he asked us if we wanted to do that. We said no. And he said, well, good. He said, I, I will do everything I can to fight for you and for this baby. And so uh, he became our doctor after that. And, Wonderful. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Wonderful. That's, uh, that, that is Praise God for a doctor that will has some good ethics. Right now, <laughs> let's go to Jennifer Henderson as she's singing, I Know He'll Make a Way. Don't he 
give up, don't give in, give it to God, give it all to Him. I know He'll make a way. I know He'll make a way. He'll show up right on time. His mighty hand is gonna turn the tide. Seashore, surrounded by fear and doubt, deep water ahead and Pharaoh behind. There seemed to be no way out. Oh, but Moses knew that the Lord would come through and make a way somehow. And he said, Don't give up, don't give in, give it to God, give it up. The mountain is high, the valley is dark and low. That old devil, he laughs at your circumstance. You don't know where to go. Oh, but don't you fret, it ain't over yet. God has it in control. And he said, don't give up, don't give in. Give it to God, give it all to him. I know. too wide, the mountain looks too high, the valley seems too dark and low, that old devil he laughs at your circumstance, you don't know where to go, oh but don't you fret, it ain't over yet, God has it in control. He will make a way. Thank you, Jennifer, for that beautiful song tonight. Uh, Pastor, we've talked about abortion. And I know there's been an awful lot of controversy on this, especially in the pro-life movement. But can a person be forgiven? Absolutely. The, the second they desire that, it's, it's absolutely forgivable. But there, there's nothing a person can't be forgiven for as long as they seek forgiveness from the Lord. And Thank you. And that, that's one of the promises he, he gives us in 1 John 1, 9. He says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. All unrighteousness is about as broad as it gets. You say all abortion, you know, all fill in the blank. So yes. that person can be absolutely forgiven. Uh, the, the problem is, you know, you said a minute ago, you don't, you're glad you're not the judge. Me too. There's a lot of us that, that think we're the judge and we make people mm -hmm. wear a scarlet letter. And, um, you know, we, we will shun people. We'll look down on them. We'll say we forgive them and we might not. And I think people feel the sting of that sometimes, even if we don't realize that we're passing that judgment. But, but God forgives and that's the most important thing. And he, of course, he tells us to forgive as well. Um, a lot of times we can talk about it in our churches or, um, you know, pro-life kind of movements, pro-life Sunday or whatever the case might be. Yeah. And we always have to make sure that we remember as often as we talk about why we're pro-life, we remind anyone in the congregation who's listening 
that they can be forgiven because it's not just the woman. There could have yes. been a, a boyfriend, a husband, a father, somebody, you know, encouraging Absolutely. that saying, well, hey, you better abort this baby because I'm not going to raise him, you know, or, yeah. or no, no daughter of mine is going to have a baby in high school. You're going to have an abortion. So yeah. it's not just women. You know, there, there's certainly men that are, you know, that pay for them or, or drive them there or whatever, yeah. too. Um, so they can definitely be forgiven for that. And, and we always meet, need to remember as we're talking about it that we let people know you don't have to wear that scarlet letter for the rest of your life. Amen. There is nothing too hard mm -hmm. for God. That's right. There's no sin that is too great for God that he can't forgive. That's, that's right. And he does. Yes. Mm -hmm. A murderer? Mm -hmm. A robber? Oh, we either. see him all through Scripture. We, we see the Apostle Paul. You know, oh, yes. If, if God could forgive Paul. Paul was the original ISIS. Yeah, he, Paul, he was, Paul he was said, killed I'm the, the chief of sinners. That's right. Yeah, he's breathing out murders against the church. Yes. And, and God forgave him and he turned his life around. And, uh, and, and we're quick to rank sins and judge different things. But, you know, a, a person who's had an abortion, is, in God's eyes, it's no grosser than any offense I've ever committed against him. So God forgives me. I expect him to forgive me. And I'm glad that he says he does. Then we need to remember that he forgives others. He forgives, forgives abortion. He forgives the abortion doctors and the ones who, is all, is, if they turn to God and cry out, he, will do, he forgave Jane Roe, Linda McCorvey. Um, yes. she, she turned her life around, now she's a pro-life advocate, the mm -hmm. one that helped legalize abortion. Uh, and, and God's forgiven her and, and turned her life around. You know, there's, there's, another, uh, there's another aspect of this forgiveness business. It's the idea of a person forgiving themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say, well, God can forgive, but here's a person who's living in guilt. Mm -hmm. And they have problems forgiving themselves. Sure. And I, I think this is something that we need to address as well. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's why that's the message that we have is that you can be forgiven. And if you've confessed, not just say you can be, if you've confessed it to God, you are forgiven. It, yes. It's done. It's ancient history. It's as far as the East is from the West. And if God's forgiven you, then, then you need to let go of it yourself. And so we need to make sure, that's why I say when, when we're talking about it, one of the reasons we do talk about it is we want to also help people avoid that, that pitfall of having to go through it. And so I want to stop anybody I can from having one Absolutely. because I know they can deal with regret for the rest of their life. I yes. always wonder, you know, what, what my child would have looked like. And so to go back to what you asked me in the last segment about is it ever okay to have an abortion, um, one of the things that, that women deal with once they've had one, and they, they might have justified it at the time, yeah. but years later they're still saying, what if I would have given my kid a fighting chance? Mm -hmm. they, they, the doctor said there was going to be a, a disability, but, but what if, you know, what if God delivered them of, of the illness? You know, what if the doctor was wrong? The amniocentesis they do to diagnose a lot of those in the womb, those uh, birth defects, they're 70% accurate. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have an abortion because the amniocentesis said your child is going to have a handicap, yeah. three out of 10 of those weren't. And, and so you better be pretty sure. Uh, so that's why we want to make sure that people don't, uh, don't have them so they don't have to deal with the regret and the guilt and the wondering. Yes. I have a grandson who is uh, uh, special needs, mm -hmm. and uh, he's adopted. Mm -hmm. And uh, his birth mother fed him alcohol when he was a small child. Wow. And it affected him. Yeah. But uh, this young man is now, he's 30 years old. But he loves Jesus with all of his heart. Yeah. He really does. And he, he'll talk to anybody about it. He, yeah. he'll, go, he'll, he'll go in anybody, anywhere, any place, mm -hmm. and talk to him about Jesus. Uh, sometimes he may be almost talk too much. <laughs> but, but, uh, well, nobody would justify killing him now because of his, no, his situation. So, so to do it in the womb, to think you're giving him a better life, is, there's no way of knowing that. That's, that's right. That's right. But God, God can take anyone, I don't, I don't care who it is, and he can work it. And mm -hmm. by the way, speaking of forgiving themselves, somebody put it like this, that uh, uh, God forgives our sins and he puts them in the sea of forgetfulness, mm -hmm. never to be remembered against us again, and he puts up a sign that says no fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I tell you. <laughs> What advice do you have for people who have experienced the loss of a child and are struggling to cope? Yeah, I would say hold on. In fact, Mercy Me sang a song several years ago that said hold fast. 
because help is on the way. It's, we say time heals all wounds. It, it doesn't heal all of them, no. but time helps. Uh, it's like taking Tylenol to mask pain sometimes. But, but with each passing day, uh, things do get a little bit better. It never goes away, but, but the passing of time. So sometimes we just have to bide our time and, and get a little separation between the present and, and the child loss. But, but then don't go through it alone. You know, whether you're, you're married or single, um, find somebody who's been through it. There, there might be people in your church or people in your community. Uh, you might find some kind of support group, but um, when, when you get a hug from somebody that's been there yeah. or, or a pat on the back, and they don't even have to say any of the, the canned expressions like everything happens for a reason, or you know, but somebody just comes and gives you a hug and you know they've been through it, that does wonders. Um, so one of the chapters in the book is things not to say, you know, and I cover some of those that people say, well, you know, we just wanted a healthy kid and this one didn't look like it was going to yeah. be healthy. And, mm -hmm. and people mean well, but, you know, just don't say anything. Just give them a hug and just say, I love you. I've been there. Um, and that stuff does help. So don't, don't go through it alone. Don't think you have to hold it all in and it'll just get better in a day or two because it, it doesn't work that way. But um, that's one of the reasons we wrote the book is so people know yeah. that they're not alone, that it's, it's far too common. In fact, um, some say one in four uh, conceptions result in some form of child loss. So, yeah. um, and th that number is astounding if you think about 25% of all pregnancies, um, the child doesn't make it. So that, th what that means is there's a lot of people walking around among us that are going through it, have gone through it. So, uh, so just don't go through it alone and, and then yeah. call out to the Lord. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And so pray to God for his Holy Spirit to do just that, to, to comfort us and get us through those times because he yes. certainly will. By the way, I see here's a praise report. This lady said that she'd had six miscarriages mm -hmm. because of lupus. Wow. The last one was twins. Yeah. <laughs> Does not blame God. The only reason she made it through them. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, people have really been calling tonight, and I think, I think it's wonderful that, that people are calling. We want, we, we're going to pray for these before mm -hmm. we finish tonight. Mm -hmm. It, uh, you know, sometimes we walk through a deep valley, and God uses those valleys for us to help others. That's right. I remember my my wife, my my first wife. I she's been deceased now for over six years, mm -hmm. but uh, she was working in this place, a business. This gentleman comes in and uh, takes care of the business, meets, meets his need there. He starts out the door, and she says, you have a nice day. He turned around and burst out crying. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's, she says, sir, did I say something to hurt you? He says, no. He says, my daughter died two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I'll never have another nice yeah. day. She says, sir, have you got a few minutes? I've got a story to tell to you. Mm. And he turned around and went back in, and for 30 minutes they talked. Nobody came into business. It was a God time. Yeah. Nobody came into business, and for 30 minutes she talked to him and told him about our experience yeah. with our son. Mm -hmm. And when he left there, 30 minutes later, he turned around with a tear in his eyes and a little bit of a smile on his face, and he says, I will have another yeah, nice day. That's right. You see, God, God can use us in so many wonderful, powerful ways mm -hmm. if, we will just, if we will just let him. Now, I understand you have a children's book version here. Almost, oh. yes, sir. It'll be out real soon. Yeah. Um, that's in, right now the book's in paperback, hardback, ebook, audio book, and then now the children's book is, is coming. So it's being oh. translated in Spanish, too. Excited about that. Spanish? But, yes, wow. sir. But it's... Um, the, the children's book is because what we went through after the book came out, um, telling our, our daughter that she was going to be a big sister and then having to go back and explain to her that the baby and mommy's tummy wasn't there anymore, the baby's in heaven. And so mm -hmm. what the, the children's book is, is for that, people that have to go back and explain to oh. a child. Um, so it's written as a poem. It's, it's going to be about 12 pages, and it's, it's basically what I said um, to my daughter when, when we had to explain that to her. Went back and, and made it rhyme and made it into more of a polished poem. But um, that, So that, that will be out uh, fairly soon. 
And I do have to say, I don't know if my daughter's still awake. It's past her bedtime, but um, <laughs> I, I happen to think uh, my daughter Reagan's the most beautiful little girl you'll ever see. And the, the illustrators for this book, when I sent them pictures of her, the way they captured her, um, they just they nailed it. So I, I can't wait for everybody to see uh, my daughter as a, as a cartoon character in the, in the book because they've done a fantastic job. My, my. Yes. Is, uh, is there anything else in this book that you think might help somebody along the way that you would like to talk about? Yeah, we, we talked about the age of accountability a minute right. ago, and I, I want to say, because some people might be watching saying, you know, well, that's great, but, I, you know, we've never been through this, so that's yeah. not for me. But, but just talking about the age of accountability, that's, that's one of those things that a lot of that Christians should just know and understand that. It's, it's a biblical doctrine, I think, and something people should know about, and uh, so that, that's laid out in there. Um, somebody might say, you know, well, I'm, I'm not really pro-life, I'm not really pro-choice, I don't, you know, but if you, if you read the book and the, the timeline, I think it's chapter 3, kind of lays that out. Mm -hmm. Christians, we ought to know that we're pro-life and why we're pro-life and what the Bible yes. has to say about, you know, God being the creator and knitting life together. So there's, there's things in there that, just simply for apologetic reasons, to help mm -hmm. Christians know what we should believe as we vote and as we talk to our coworkers and as we live in this society. So it's not just a, a book that's a women's issues or child loss or stuff. It, it, I think there's things in there that... Um, that all believers could benefit from. Yes, I'm sure there is. Uh, I want us to pray over these. We have some praise reports. Great. We have some requests here. Uh, I see everything from financial needs to mental needs. Uh, you name it. People are hurting. A lot of people are hurting. I want, us, I want us to pray and ask God to reach out and touch these people. Would you, would you join with me and yes, sir. pray for these? To. Yes, sir. How much time do I have? You've got about a minute. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's pray then. God, I, I want to stop right now and, and lift up these many, many requests that have been shared. And I'm thankful for the ones who called in to do that. And, and Lord, first, I want to praise you for the praise reports. Um, it's, you know, a lot of times we're so quick to say please and not go back and say thank you. And so we, we thank you for answering prayer and for doing great things. Uh, but Lord, I also want to lift up the prayer requests and, and for the ones in, in financial struggles. Lord, I pray that you would open up the floodgates of heaven and, and meet those needs Lord, I pray for the ones that, um, you know, the, the, the mental needs, and, and maybe there's people that are struggling with, uh, can I really be forgiven of a choice I made? Maybe it is an abortion. Lord, I want to pray for the ones that are watching that have had an abortion. God, let them know that if they've confessed that to you, that is ancient history and never to be brought up again. Yes. Uh, and so, Lord, I pray that, that since you've released it, they would learn to release it as well. Uh, God, I want to pray for this dear lady that, that talked about the six miscarriages. And, and Lord, I, I don't know if she's a believer in you, but I know that those children are all in heaven. And uh, God, if she's a believer, I pray that she would just be able to look forward to the day that she will finally see them uh, while, in, until uh, that day. And Lord, I pray for anybody that may they called in, they, they don't know you. Lord, I pray that maybe you've put a hardship in their life as a means to bring them to you. And, and maybe it is child loss. And I, I've certainly heard stories through this experience of people that have come to you through child loss. And so, God, I pray that you would save uh, people in that way. So, God, we pray for a great night, and we lift these up to you again. That's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. So glad that you could join us here tonight. And, and uh, may the blessings of the Lord be yours. And uh, right now we're, we're going to... Uh, a song, Jennifer singing, This Blood. There is a blood that cost a lot. Paid my way, death its price. When it fell down from the cross, my sins were gone, my sins forgot. There is a grave that tried to hide. This precious blood, 
that gave me life. In three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he derived. Tear that falls, and so I come to tell you that he saves, to shout and to proclaim that he's coming back for you. There is a blood that sights the blind, it heals the sick. And the lonely it finds And it has the power To free the bound As chains they fall Upon the ground So pour it out Let it cleanse my soul Lord, let your Thank you so much, Jennifer, for that beautiful song. You know, uh, I want to urge you one more time. You have a need. 
you have a sickness, you have a hurt, call our prayer ministers. They're standing by for your call right now. They're ready to receive your call. They're ready to pray with you and help you. God bless you. God love you. God is a wonderful God. This has been a wonderful program tonight, and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not over yet. We've still got some good things ahead. So, hey, stay there with us. God bless you. Right now, welcoming Jennifer Henderson. God bless you, Jennifer. Bless you. So delighted. And thank you so much for that beautiful music that you've oh. been providing tonight. Oh, well, thank you guys for the opportunity to be here tonight. You've got a beautiful voice. Thank you. And uh, I believe you've got a beautiful Christian testimony, too. Can you share something about your Christian background, your testimony tonight with us? Uh, people are interested. Well, um, it, it's, it's, there's a lot, and it just grows every day. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I was raised in a, in a Christian home and had so many questions um, because I was, I was raised in a, in a legalistic mm -hmm. Christianity. Okay. And, um, you know, I wasn't allowed to go to movies. I wasn't, I mean, I'm only 38, so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> growing up without going to movies, you know, people thought I was weird back then. Um, so, you know, I, I just had so many questions and, and doubts and confusion, and, and I knew Christ and I loved Christ, but I wanted nothing to do with, with the legalistic views that uh -huh. I was raised with. And, um, it led me to a loveless marriage and um, domestic violence. Um, I was a victim of domestic violence for, for several years and um, I have a beautiful son from that marriage, but um, it, it, God had other plans and I came back to him just um, with, a, with a new hunger and a desire to serve him, but I wanted him to make himself real to me. Praise God. And he is real. Yes. You know, Someone has said, religion, no. Jesus, yes. Yes, yes. That's, that's really what it's all about. It's a relationship. Yes. It's not a dogma. It's not, it's right. not a, a creed and all these things. Maybe these things work in with it, yes. But mm -hmm. the main thing, do we have a relationship with Jesus? And the scripture tells us that there many will come in that day and come before him and he'll say, I never knew you. Right. God right. help us. It, we might have that relationship, yes. You know, it, it is, he does want to make himself real to us, and he wants that personal relationship. You know, I, I, I grew up singing, and uh, I've sung in so many different denominations, and, you know, every denomination is right. Oh, yes. You know, <laughs> and I, I'm the only one who's right, and I, I pray, I'm like, God, we can't all be perfectly right. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, you know, how, how's, how's this work? And, and I really began to, to just seek him. And I got to the point that I literally, I was, God, what, what's the truth? And he said, take me at my word. And I, no, no, really. What? He says, take me at my word. If it's, if it's in, if it's in my holy pages uh -huh. from page one to the last page, if it's anywhere in there, if I say do it, you better do it. If yeah. I say leave it alone, leave it alone. Yeah. And, and that just really changed my walk and, and, and my desire. And I find myself, the, the older I get, the bolder I get. And um, I, I've reached a point that he's done so much for me. And he's just, he continues to blow my mind and um, at times make me question. Uh, a time of question this past um, May of 2012, uh, I was diagnosed with a genetic eye disease that uh, I had never, I was a carrier, but I had never shown any signs of it. Hmm. And um, out of the blue, I mean, just totally blindsided with, I, I go to the eye doctor and you're legally blind. I said, do what? <laughs> and so life as I knew it turned upside down and um, I went through a really dark period. Yeah. And I found myself flat of my face in my kitchen floor. I had had a bad fall in my house and literally my husband had to pick me up out of the floor. Hmm. And I, before he picked me up, I, I literally was just slamming my fist into the floor, just screaming, God, why? Yeah. And when I got up, um, all nice and snotty and ugly, <laughs> my uh. poor husband had to see, you know, the, the, the whole meltdown. And my kids are sitting there looking at me like, okay, mommy has lost it. Um, but I, I sat on the couch and God just began to speak to me. Do you trust me? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, no, you don't. 
You're using your house as your safety net. Your husband is your safety net. I am your safety net. And at that point, I really began to step out in that faith. I decided that whatever it takes, I'm going to walk this out. God, I will serve you. If you, if you want me to, to walk this walk, then I'm going to walk this walk. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for myself. We're going to go see what you have to do. And since Amen. then, God has really been just opening door after door after door of, of opportunity for ministry. Everywhere I go, I find that someone is, is placed in my, in my way to, to encourage. Mm -hmm. It's just God's good. He's just so good and so faithful. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Oh, hallelujah. You know, we all have challenges that we face. Yes. We all have things that come before us. And sometimes we can get to feel like that we're the only one right. that has these things. Yes. But I do not believe that God orders these problems in our lives. But when these problems come our way and we learn to walk with Him yes. and let Him direct our paths, right. then God can use that to right. minister to someone else that is hurting yes. as well. And I, I sense that that's what you have been doing a little bit of, right? I have. It's, it's, it's unreal. So many people are hurting and you, you can't look at someone and see what their problem is. Most no. people don't know that I have an eye condition. Yeah. If I'm not looking at you, what's going on down here, I have no clue. Every once in a while, I'll find something in my, in my peripheral and I'll, I'll look away. So people think I'm being shifty, but no, I saw something move and I want to make sure it's not going to, you know, come up and bite me. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. floors and tables and walls and steps, yeah, those are, those are hazards. I, I, I make a lot of friends with, you know, columns and, and mirrors in stores. I'll find myself, you know... Um, telling the wall, I'm sorry, excuse me, I didn't mean to bump you. <laughs> uh, I've learned to laugh at it. It used to embarrass me, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. So, um, but, you know, you can't, when you can't look at someone and see what their problem is, you mm -hmm. know, it's like that with sin. With sin in our lives, we can put on a beautiful smile yes. and a beautiful facade, but on the inside be dying. Yes. Man. <laughs> yeah. I, I just love how God uses this as an opportunity People will, I'll bump into someone. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you, I, you know, and, and that opens the door. Mm -hmm. And I told God, I promised him, I said, you know, I used to not want to, you know, shove God down anyone's throat. And I don't want to shove, shove him in anyone's face. But if they crack the door, I'm going to stick my big foot in it. <laughs> and I'm going to say, excuse me, let me, <laughs> let me share with you. Let me, let me just yes. share a little bit with you. So God has just been, he's, he's really blown my mind in, in the past three years, really. Wonderful. Where is the Lord taking you today? Well, each day is new and different. Uh, uh -huh. A year ago, um, I was perfectly content. I was singing, and um, the Lord opened the door for me to to record my first solo project. Um, some sweet day, I went to TBN Studios in um, Hendersonville, and I recorded with Gerald Crabb, and it, that just blew my mind. I was so excited. Yay, I've done it. I have a CD. I can sell mm -hmm. it. It had some of my, my most requested songs. I did uh, Four Days Late and um, Safe Thus Far, Hoskins Family Song. And, and they're both testimony songs for me that, that, yes. that God has just really used to, to bless me and to bless others through. Mm -hmm. And um, right after that, um, I had several calls to come in asking me to sign on with a label. And I, I just... I sat on the floor and cried. I, I literally, I, I'm like, God, what are you doing? Because I'm, I'm comfortable, and now you're, you're throwing me out of my comfort zone and pushing me into a solo ministry. I don't want to do this. Yeah. And um, as a year ago, if you told me I'd be sitting here on your show tonight with two CDs, uh, not just one, but two, and, yes. um, and, and God just opening doors for ministry. He's pushing me more into, into women's ministry, one-on-one -on -one ministry. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not just singing uh, uh, that makes me uncomfortable at times but mm -hmm. I find myself being pushed more into full-blown ministry yeah. so um, each day is a, is a new journey I yes. just say okay where are we going how can people contact you I, I have a website it's um, www.jenniferphenderson.com I'm on Facebook uh, Jennifer Henderson GA um, I'm signed with Redemption, Redemption World Records, yes. um, and uh, I'm on their website as well. So um, I also have a phone number and uh, email, and 
think it's all up on the screen. Okay. And yes, I see the I see your your two CDs are on the screen right now. Yes. There. Yes, sir. That's mm -hmm. good. That's great. That's great. Well, that's that's wonderful, Jennifer, and I appreciate your show coming and singing tonight and sharing your testimony. And uh, I remind the audience, our prayer ministers are still there, and uh, it's still reports are still coming in. Here's somebody the father has dementia, uh, another family salvation. Uh, God, so many, so many people are calling in tonight. And we want to, we want to pray together for, for all of these requests here. My, there's quite a bunch of them there that wow. people have called in that wow. are listening and they have needs and God has ministered to them. And even some praise reports in here. Thank God for those. Yes. Let's agree together right now in prayer as, yes. as we close out tonight. Father yes. in heaven, Lord, you see the needs of these people, hurting people. You see the reports, praise reports, of answered prayer. And Lord, I know that you can heal the sick. I know that you can work miracles. I know that you can save the lost. Now I pray tonight that people will see you and know you and love you and come to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, I thank you for Jennifer, and I pray your blessings upon her as she continues in ministry. In the name of the living God we pray. Amen. Amen.